everybody. All right, my name is Jacopo Parvizzi, and I'm a PhD student at the Department of DTU Compute. I'm Applied Mathematics and Computer Science. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the first results uh, that I obtained after uh, one long year of work uh, trying to model and control uh, heat pumps. Uh, this work uh, was done in collaboration with two companies, N4, which is a, a forecasting and optimization uh, company for the energy sector, and uh, Grumfos. Um, we can start from uh, an idea that we already saw and heard about today, that um, we can optimize based on um, an external signal in order to achieve uh, to, to achieve some flexibility. Um, These this signals, they could be uh, a load or a price. Um, if we apply those external signals, we would like to see that our units are actually shifting their consumption in different ways. Uh, the objectives or of uh, my studies, my study were, were uh, study flexibility potentials in, uh, in um, family houses. Then to study the controllability. As uh, Giuseppe was saying, it's important also to see if uh, we can um, deploy and implement algorithms and see how they work in, in real life. Um, we also heard a lot about uh, using forecasts and forecasting uh, uh, electricity and prices in order to uh, control energy system. So we are going to see today how uh, we are doing it. And um, I would like also to talk about how the system is adaptive and designed in order to be um, used in a way that we can uh, shift the consumption based on different kind of loads. Uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the installation after one year of experiments and then, uh, of course, we're going to talk also about user comfort and uh, good in indoor climate, for example. Uh, and at the end, uh, we, can, we will uh, see how and if some energy savings can be achieved through optimization. Uh, the outline of the talk is going to be uh, installation and the structure and how the system is, how we control it, how we implement the forecast, and then a little bit of demonstration that you can actually see on the side. Of course, we had some problems, as usual, <laughs> uh, at the beginning of the week. So, unfortunately, nothing, uh, as not everything is running uh, smoothly. But um, what we can see, and you can have a look here, there are three plots. And uh, basically, here you have uh, a storage, an energy storage, which is a hot water tank. And those are the temperatures of the level of the water. And the last two are uh, the heat pump power production and the house load, uh, as well as the domestic hot water consumption. And uh, if it's supposed to run smoothly, this uh, plot will evolve. I mean, uh, the controller, unfortunately, is running every hour. So we will see this moving very slowly, or maybe not at all, depending on how fast I am in <laughs> presenting. But yeah, uh, so uh, this is where everything starts, this beautiful house, uh, which is in Bienbo, somewhere in Jutland. And uh, this looks like a very high-tech uh, house. <laughs> uh, very high-tech house. And um, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that. But um, you will be amazed on what's under the hood and uh, in the basement here. Let's uh, have a look at it. This, for you, it's maybe a bunch of lines. For me, it looks like Leonardo da Vinci drawing. Um, now I will go in detail through each component of the heating system, and then uh, we will have a look at this picture, and hopefully it will be more interesting for you. Okay, so we start from the hot water tank. 
this is the, our uh, storage in the house. Usually when, uh, when you hear about uh, controlling a, a heating system, um, the energy, the flexibility is uh, um, accumulated inside the house. We decided to use a hot water tank, which is in, in between uh, the energy production from the heat pump and the, and the house. Uh, the hot water tank is 600 liter capacity and uh, is stratified, which means that uh, the water uh, is uh, injected inside the tank with uh, these special pipes, and uh, the pipe opens when the water is entering at the same uh, temperature level. So here, uh, some engineers, I mean, I didn't do this, uh, <laughs> uh, this test, uh, basically they injected some colored water at different temperatures, and then you can see how it stabilizes based on the temperature. Uh, the hot water tank, as uh, you maybe understood from the previous image, has multiple connections. Uh, basically, there is um, a solar collector, which is uh, injecting hot water. There is a heat pump injecting hot water. The tank is attached to a house. And uh, there is also district heating as a backup. Uh, the solar thermal collector is uh, 7.2 square meters. And um, it's on the side of the house. That's why you couldn't see it from the previous picture. I told you that it's full of... Uh, surprises this house. Uh, the heat pump uh, delivers up to seven kilowatts, and uh, this actually it was a limitation, but at the same time it was interesting because then uh, we started to uh, plan the research on a different way that you will see, because the main problem is that the output uh, temperature of the water is up to 55 degrees so you cannot store enough energy in the water tank. Therefore, you have to come up with uh, clever ideas how to do that. i uh, still not that clever, maybe in the future. Uh, then the um, um, hot water tank uh, has a domestic hot water uh, distribution system uh, which with the Grunfos freshwater module. And uh, basically, uh, this allows the hot water for tap water and uh, showers. Um, there are a lot of sensors, like weather station, local weather station, heat meters, uh, and uh, many temperature sensors. Uh, here is a, a photo of the inside of the uh, tank. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but uh, this is the insulation inside the tank, and then there are attached um, the um, sensors to measure the temperature inside the tank. So actually, these, these levels are not measured from the inside, but from the outside. Um, now, let's have a look at the, at the plant picture. Uh, here we have the water tank, uh, which is connected to the heat pump, and also the solar collector is injecting water inside the tank. The water is coming at different levels. Uh, we can see that the, the uh, multi-valve pipes are attached to the, to, the, to the heat pump and to the, to the house and to the solar collector, while the, the tap water and the the tap water module and uh, the fresh water module is attached to these two pipes. So basically, the, the cold water is injected at the bottom and the warm water is injected at the top. Then there is the district heating system, which is uh, attached as a backup. Why? It's because uh, in the house there are actually people living, which are employees from Grunfos, and um, those... Um, Guys, we don't want that actually they, they freeze to death <laughs> because they're actually <laughs> living there. So uh, our main concern is uh, user comfort. So every time we, we are deploying an algorithm, we make sure that uh, they have enough energy stored inside the, the hot water tank in order to, 
have some nice showers. Uh, then the, the tank, as I said, is connected also to the, to the radiator heating and to the floor heating inside the house. And those gray boxes are all the heat meter sensors attached. How we control the house? We use uh, model predictive control. Uh, I, won't, uh, I know this is it's late, it's last talk, so I won't bother you with a lot of equations. I promise I won't, uh, there is not a single one. <laughs> um, OK, so let's say that we are, how, how does this work? Uh, we are at time k, so we want to use some flexibility inside the house. How do we use it? We have uh, a desired set point inside the tank, Hope, and what we are aiming at is to heat up the water inside the tank as much as we can in order to be used later on. But at the beginning, I said that we are basing this on some external signals. We could be load or a price. In this case, a price is used. So basically, what we do is we heat up the water tank when the energy price is low. And we're using, for these uh, purposes, the spot price. Um, at time k, so we make some predictions. The predictions are coming from uh, M4, the energy forecasting company, which provides us a forecast from the, uh, from the house, so how much the house is going to consume in the next day, and uh, uh, also a forecast of the price. How is the price going to look like in the future for the next day? And also, um, how much energy is coming from the solar collector based on the weather conditions. And we repeat, uh, we want to achieve this set point, so we optimize, then we have an input, uh, an input to the system, which will be the temperature of the water that we want to select, which is connected to the heat pump. And at the next iteration, we slide of an hour and we re-optimize. Uh, there was a lot of debate about why controlling by prices, and uh, the main objection uh, that was pointed out from the EnergyNet uh, project was that uh, even if we move part of demand from periods um, with a high price to periods with a low price, uh, the amount of uh, money savings that we're going to have is, is going to be so low that is not enough to motivate people to actually use and uh, spend a lot of money to install uh, the systems. So there are uh, low economic benefits. And the ex uh, equipment is expensive also to, uh, to be installed. Uh, therefore, the, the return on investment is going to be very long. And uh, this is not, as, is not being proven, is not being proved to um, uh, solve problems in peak shaving. Uh, but my idea and uh, what we are trying to achieve is to now to model a single house and a controller attached to this house, and then make a bigger optimization system in order to use many houses to shift the consumption. So it's not going to be just one house, but a uh, um, sort of an um, ensemble of houses in order to maybe lower the uh, load consumption in, uh, in a specific district. So uh, we have our, this is a scheme of uh, what we think um, is going to be uh, the communication in between units. The, the distributed energy resources are listed here, and each of them, they have a single uh, controller, which optimizes based on a price or an external signal which is coming into the controller. Uh, this is the main uh, argument, because there is no um, state-of-the-art way of defining this price, and uh, which is going to be part of my research in the future, to see how we can optimize this price in order to control a group of houses. Uh, our storage, as I said, um, has different input and outputs. 
the signal uh, they're sent uh, to the um, forecasting company are to receive the forecast are the solar collector load, the house indoor temperature, and the house heat load. And what we receive are the solar power forecast, the house heat load forecast, and the price forecast. Uh, as we can see from this very simple scheme, we have two inputs and two outputs to the system, uh, one, two inputs and one output to the system, and then this is the energy dissipated from the tank. And the two inputs are the, uh, the heat coming from the heat pump and the, the energy coming from the solar collector. Um, after w almost a year of uh, tries, and uh, we, we came up with uh, this nice plot. I'm very sorry that you cannot actually see the y-axis here, but I will try to go through each plot. Uh, this is uh, data which is being collected from January to till today. The first plot represents uh, the, the levels, the temperature levels inside the water tank. And as we can see, and we, I will discuss later, the, the levels, the stratification inside the tank is changing depending on the use, which was the main reason and the main outcome of uh, our, my, my study. Uh, this uh, second plot uh, represents the the um, house load, how much the house is actually requiring to be heated up. Uh, the third plot is uh, the power used from the, uh, from the showers and the tap water. Uh, as we can see, that it's increasing while we go to, towards the summer. Um, and these two plots are the energy consumed from the heat pump and the energy injected inside the tank. Uh, and the last one is the, um, oh, sorry, this is the, um, um, the energy production from the, from the solar collector, and this is the, the, the showers, the energy from the showers. Uh, so uh, we used, um, uh, we deployed two different controllers, and the, our controller is using a, a model of the water tank which is uh, based on uh, an average of all the temperature inside the tank. This, um, as we can see, is not optimizing properly the, uh, the stratification inside the tank. Our problem, as I said before, was that the, the energy inside the tank can be up to 55 degrees. And therefore, we're not using the full capacity of the, of the hot water tank. Um, so uh, we decided now uh, that instead of having um, monitored the average temperature inside the tank, it would be better to use um, an optimization which takes care of uh, all the different levels. But why this? Where is the problem? The problem is that every time we inject uh, water, uh, it depends, it doesn't go exactly at the same uh, level where the temperature is, because uh, it depends on how the state of the, of the uh, water inside the tank is. Uh, here I have maybe a better example. Here you can see the, the water tank temperature, uh, the flow inside the tank, and, um, and the input temperature of the water. Um, first of all, it's very important to see that we can uh, accumulate energy based also on how much we use the tank. And uh, therefore, it's important to reduce the flow as much as possible to maximize the stratification inside the tank. Second, we can see that some, sometimes it's stratified and sometimes is actually the, 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 all the temperatures, they collapse. But why this? It's because when, when we inject from a constant state, when we inject, inject uh, warm water, uh, we start, the, the water goes to the, to the first uh, warm level. But since there is a high stratification, the, low, the lower part will be very cold, as we can see here. And the upper part will, will be extremely warm. 
So the water is going to influence and cool down and ruin the, the stratification inside the tank. Therefore, we see that after injecting some, some warm water, the, uh, the temperature collapses. And in this case, uh, for us, it's very important because we, we cannot use anything else than a heat pump to heat up the water inside the tank. Theref that's why we have to uh, improve our controller in a way that takes care of all the different, uh, that monitors all the different levels inside the tank. Uh, now I'm going to analyze uh, some of the data that we collected from the, um, from the forecast that we received. And uh, in, uh, in here is the heat load data from January to November. In, the, in black, you can see the, uh, the measurements of the heat load of the house. And in, uh, and in red is the, uh, are the forecast. Here I actually plotted the one step ahead forecasts. As it's easy to notice, there are a lot of spots around. That's because we are implementing and uh, therefore there are a lot of communication problems which are interesting to study. The, um, in, the in the summer period, there were a lot of communication problems, so we couldn't analyze the data here. Uh, what we came up is just simply uh, comparing the house load measured with uh, the predictions. And we can see um, that as we increase the, the prediction, here is uh, one, one hour ahead prediction, and those are 24 hour ahead prediction. For, uh, this is, is for the month of April, where we had most of the data. Um, we can see that the predictions, they follow uh, the red line, which is supposed to be one-to-one -one if the one-to-one -one comparison, if the uh, forecasts follow exactly uh, the, the measurements. And as expected, the, the longer is the forecast, the higher is the deviation from the perfect uh, forecast. And uh, also, we examined the, the spot price data. Uh, here are plotted as well the, in black the, the measurements and in red the, the forecast. And we also had some problems during the summer. And uh, here we made more or less the same analysis. And as you can see, uh, from one hour ahead, 12 hours, 13, 18, 20, and 24, the error is increasing, as expected. Uh, the demonstration uh, goals are mainly to see if we can have forecast as a service and implement them in the model predictive controllers. Because usually what, what um, uh, you read in the papers is that uh, you can see only uh, perfect forecasts or simulated uh, data. And uh, it was actually um, interesting to see how to cope with uh, the uh, missing data and how to uh, deal with it in, and optimize in a proper way. And um, the, one of the other goals is to use the heat capacity in the water tank in order to optimize and store energy and uh, automa automate the, the building heating with focus on uh, user comforts. Um, here we can see a simulation, which is taken from uh, two colleagues of mine. And um, here they use, um, um, they assume that in, in the water tank, the, the water can go up to 100 degrees. So um, in the first plot, you can see the the temperature inside the tank, and here is the forecast of the next 24 hours. And uh, in the second plot, there is in green, you see the electricity price, and in red, you see when the, when the heat pump is activated in order to, cool, to, to heat up the, the water inside the tank. And in the last one, there are the disturbances. In red is the load, which is coming from the house, and in green is the energy coming from the solar collector. 
And as expected, the optimization is uh, increasing the uh, is using the energy only when the when the price is at its minimum. But that's not only true in in real life. Our first limitation is that we cannot heat up up to 100 degrees. The second limitation is that, that therefore, we can use only uh, 55 degrees, and uh, the boundaries are way shorter. This implies that the uh, overall energy use cannot be uh, applied for, cannot be stored for one day, as we can see from this plot, unfortunately. Um, actually, the uh, yeah, you can see that uh, it increased of maybe yeah three steps. Um, so uh, there is not uh, there is not much uh, uh, going going on right now. Uh, the the overall um, um, consumption in red here is the tap water. So we can see that every time they're using water is being drawn, and this is influencing a lot. The, the levels inside the tank. Uh, at this moment, you cannot see any pre-planning, or maybe a little bit. Uh, but this is because the, the, the water consumption is not actually uh, predicted, but is applied into the controller as a disturbance. So basically, the controller is blind and doesn't know when the users are going to uh, have a shower. And this is going to be our uh, goal for the next, uh, for the next year. Uh, for the forecast, um, unfortunately, the, the, the system is the, not uh, working properly because uh, last week uh, the um, internet connection was down. But uh, I made a plot of the demonstration that I gave uh, semest last semester, and uh, this is how it looks. Um, this is how the forecast that we receive looks uh, like. And uh, we can see in the first one we have the, the house load forecast. And um, the 95% boundaries, and in between these uh, long linear uh, blocks, it's because we didn't receive any data. The, the controller didn't receive any data, so I had to sort of use the previous data. Uh, this is just a, a connection. The second one is the how much the uh, the the solar collector is uh, going to produce. And in the last one, we see forecast, one step ahead forecast of the spot price that is used for the optimization. Uh, what we learned from um, one year uh, of um, implementation is that uh, predictive individual loads is difficult because it's mainly based on user behavior. So uh, if um, it, it took a bit of time for the um, uh, forecast to uh, start uh, predicting correctly the data, also because the um, uh, the users inside the house are changing all the time. Since um, um, it's not a family, but they're employees which are coming from uh, just for a visit, and that the user comfort is a priority and a challenge. People are living in the house, and we have to take care of the of the overall system. So we cannot apply. Uh, drastic changes to the, um, to the control algorithm. But we have to take care that uh, everything is running smoothly before uh, making some moves. Uh, fewer actuators are involved. We don't have a lot of control. And this is a limitation, but at the same time is, a, um, is an interesting challenge, especially because uh, we uh, are forced to come up with uh, clever ideas on how to uh, optimize energy. Uh, also, the, the fact that the house was uh, not a high-tech, low-energy house, it's, it was interesting and challenging uh, because it forces you to uh, um, use technology in a different way. And uh, that it, the limited energy storage, I guess we already discussed this quite in detail, since it's connected directly to the heat pump, was a, was a problem. 
Uh, therefore, we're going to try to implement uh, new models. How? Uh, use, uh, increase the flexibility potential with, with stratification that we think is the, is the next goal. Uh, in the future, we, um, we're going to also see how uh, large-scale large systems are, are going to, to behave. Um, because sometimes the, uh, the, the process, oh, I, I forgot actually what I meant with the, <laughs> with the second point. Uh, associated costs need to be minimized and the process simplified. Yeah, of course. Um, it's, um, it's because the, uh, the, the, the costs which are um, used for the uh, for the installation are, are quite expensive. Therefore, we have to come up with, uh, with clever ideas on how to, how to use the uh, algorithms in order to simplify and reduce the amount of, of the um, sensors and uh, actuators in the system. Um, this technology can also be applied in, uh, in a bigger system like district heating plants. Uh, for example, uh, the same um, functions, the same dynamics of the, the hot water uh, tank can be applied to, to a district heating power plant, which is basically sometimes it's a big uh, heat pump. And uh, they move a lot of, uh, they move a big, bigger load. Therefore, it's very interesting to see how the uh, overall um, energy and uh, economic uh, optimization can be. And uh, for sure, it's important to, the, the biggest challenge is uh, the, the definition of a new market and uh, how the price is going to be defined, how the contract between the users and, uh, um, and the uh, DSOs are going to be, and the structure of the market itself. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually sorry that uh, I cannot play as uh, nicely as uh, Giuseppe did before, simply because we cannot uh, move the, um, the load as fast as uh, you saw before. But, uh, but it's interesting to see at least that uh, it's not crashing. <laughs> um, so, uh, any, any specific question? bit nasty one. What kind of customer do you uh, look at? What kind of business case? Who's going to pay for this? The DSO? I'm from the DSO and I don't think so. Uh, so uh, what, what, are you, what kind of business case is this all this based on? What are you thinking of? Of course you haven't got a business case. Uh, you wrote that in the second last slide. But what's the basis? What, where's the customer? Where do we expect? Um, Where is it hiding? The customer. But uh, you mean for the overall bigger optimization or for the, the specific system? Um, the customer can be the, the user itself. If uh, you change the, um, the object of the optimization, which uh, from an economic point of view can be easily shifted to uh, energy optimization, therefore using less energy into the system. But uh, I, would, um, I would think of uh, a player in between the DSO and the, and the user, which can uh, install this system or uh, part of them for free to the user and then make some sort of uh, contracts in between, and then uh, take all the risk to optimize the, the energy, to, to basically keep some, uh, some certain user comfort for the clients, and at the same time try to shift the load and sell some services on the higher level, which could be DSO, for example. 
but uh, I understand that that uh, from your uh, point of view, there is no uh, business, a clear business case. Uh, did I answer your question or? Bill Douglas, Dennis Kennedy. Uh, in your plots, you didn't show if the um, district heating backup uh, connection was uh, was in use. Is that because it, you never used it? And uh, no, I don't think we we never we used it. Okay. So far, we were so good that uh, the the people <laughs> were not dying in the house. Uh -huh. yeah. Or maybe when when there was a problem, nobody was uh, calling uh, the engineers to <laughs> to realize that. Okay. But so far, it wasn't used. Okay. But it's always uh, uh, it's always there to be. To be used just in case uh, something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, basically, when when the, if the the temperature levels inside the tank are low. But that's because this is a, a prototype system. Yeah, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jacopo, have you tried to compare your setup with uh, the traditional solution? Have you tried to figure out how much uh, you actually gain? Uh, not yet. That's actually a good question. Uh, it's simply because um, we didn't um, we didn't have uh, physical time to uh, to have enough data to see how much how much we can gain. But uh, now we I'm running in parallel uh, just a PI controller which uh, basically it's sort of like a thermostatic controller which doesn't take care of any future plan and, uh, and then run that for until maybe the end of January and uh, compare the results between that. Because, because the problem is that even though if you, if you don't run them in parallel, that at the same time you can, uh, it's, it's difficult to make, to make a, a clear comparison because you can say, okay, uh, I can run this online and then later take the data and run, uh, put, use the inputs and the forecast and then simulate it. But that's not, never going to reflect how actually the system is working. So yeah, I'm, I'm running basically a ghost, uh, uh, a ghost uh, simulation on the, in parallel uh, right now and see how it's going to be later. I have um, a question. Mm. So ah, yeah. maybe I missed it. Um, it's late in the day. Yeah. Uh, but the end customer, how can he notify you that he's, he's unhappy with the shower temperature? At this moment, yeah. uh, we have actually a very uh, high-tech module, which is called the phone. Ah. <laughs> because I, I think this was mentioned before that the, the comfort on the end cost customer it's very important, and it's the, when yeah. he picks up the phone, it's already too late. Yes, um, it's because he is taking a very cold shower. Because probably he he have t taken a few cold showers. No, no, I think uh, after one he okay. will. <laughs> okay. But but yeah, you're right. And um, what what we what we uh, what I said be before is that um, right now, the the all the showers uh, are used as a disturbance. So basically, the the optimization doesn't know how when the users are going to have a shower, which could be a problem if, for example, the levels are very low. So here the user come and use a, a very long shower because this guy likes to have 15 minute showers and therefore the energy is going to go down. But um, the, the next plan is to, is to actually use, uh, make some uh, probabilistic models. So you, you kind of have the probability that the, when the user is gonna is gonna have a shower because of in the system people are switching off and so the the habits are changing quite fast. <laughs>